Welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. It is September 26th. 1998. It is. And I have no stories today. I have no Shame news. on you. No news today. It's been a slow news week. <laughs> I, I scoured through the newspaper, and of course there's stories about William Jefferson Clinton. Well, of course. That we don't want to talk about because we don't want to talk about politics. Because that has nothing to do with entertainment. Uh, I mean, unless you find, uh, you know, saxophone playing... Uh, <laughs> Molesting uh, oh, in terms uh, uh, presidents <laughs> entertaining exactly, um, and we uh, you know there like there wasn't there wasn't anything like just interesting at all in the newspaper. So instead of forcing it, instead of forcing you to have listen to me read a newspaper article and have Carol be like, oh yeah, that's cool. I have some news. Ooh, what? Well, I mean, technically, you have some news. I do. About how some lady today yeah. was chatting you up at work. <laughs> That's what I got to hear about today. Yeah, but at least I told you about it. So. Yeah, and I and I really appreciate it. There was a, a, a woman today that, you know, I feel like, I don't know, but I feel like was maybe being slightly... Flirtatious with me. So this woman apparently um, sat near him. Yeah. We sat together. Asked his opinion about things. Yeah. Said that they should go out. (laughs) And he's not sure that she was hitting on him. (laughs) Well, when I mentioned that I had a fiance, she Mm -hmm. said, you know, is she is she cool? Yeah, because she was checking to see if you were happy in your relationship. And I said, I said, she's the best. Yeah, you did good. You you get a cookie, you're fine. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think I, I'm. I don't know, like ladies, don't you feel? Um, I don't know, just generally irked and irritated when you know some woman's been sniffing around your man. Like, I just kind of want to go beat her ass. How does? How do you? How do you navigate a situation like that when you're at work? Now I'm talking to the fellows, or or I guess the ladies too. Either way, but how do you how do you navigate a situation like that where you're at work and you're trying to do your job, and part of your job is to interact with the public, and the public is flirting with you is a pretty woman who's flirting with you, and you want to like do your job, but also like create boundaries. How do you do it? What do you do? Well, I mean, you made a sale and you um, didn't give her your personal phone number. So yeah. I feel like you did okay. Yeah. She didn't get my digits, everyone. Uh, and I made a sale. So, I mean, she does know where to find you, unfortunately. For now. If, if we start getting cooked bunnies, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> Just Don't saying. ignore me, Mark. Just say it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, my, um, what's, the, what's the word? Not migrating, uh, matriculating. <laughs> I'm matriculating away from that particular place. So yeah, that's where, true. Where I work, so it won't be, uh, won't be an issue. So we want to worry about psycho stalkers for long? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Uh, speaking of psycho stalkers, though, <laughs> Carol, there sure was a psycho stalker in this movie we watched. Yeah, there was. This was a really good movie. We watched Urban Legend. Yeah. With the Noxima girl, uh, Dylan's erstwhile wife. I missed her. On uh, 90210. Uh, also, what's his name? Joshua Jackson. Yeah, Dawson's Creek Zone. Pacey. Uh, who else was in this movie? Um, there was... Oh, what's her? She's really pretty. Tara Reed. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> she is pretty. I agree. She's got a very cute little face. Yeah. 
Uh, and then, oh, uh, Jared Leto. Yeah, yeah, from uh, My So-Called Life. Yeah, from My So-Called Life. Um, so, a lot of pretty young people. Yeah, well, I mean, that is what makes movies fun to watch. This, rem- and, and, we- and not Wes Craven. Uh, I swear and- to God, I thought you were going to say, and wet. <laughs> sorry, sorry, people. And uh, Robert England. Somebody was wet earlier. Oh yes. my God! I'm gonna have to throw that uh, cushion away. I guess uh, Robert England in this as well. Not he doesn't do much in this movie, but he's the professor. Yes, he is the professor. Yeah, I mean he does a decent job. Frederick Krueger. It's so weird to see him not as Freddy. Yeah, exactly. I can hardly even like make the connection. But so this movie, I feel like I liked it as well as you did. Uh, I feel like this movie was like kind of like Scream. Like I feel like it was trying yeah. to be a little Scream like. It definitely had that vibe. Um, it went a little darker, I think. Yeah, than Scream. Mixed with some of I know what you did last summer. Sure, but it also had more just gratuitous violence and nudity and nudity than these other movies. Had some sex. Mm-hmm. A goth girl has sex. Yeah. It wasn't, like, great sex. It wasn't... Su- I mean, like... There wasn't a lot to see. It sounded pretty good. I mean, right, but I'm just saying, like, yeah, there was some nudity and there was some sex, but it wasn't, like, watching, like, you know, a wannabe no, porn or anything. No. It wasn't, like, a Friday the 13th. Right. There we go. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. It wasn't like that. It wasn't, like, a slasher film. It was... Uh, it was fucked up, though. What happens sex. to her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing's fucked up. So, the movie begins, uh, as any urban legend does, uh, about uh, this woman who is driving in a car back to her her school. Right. And she stops at the gas station. She's almost out of gas. Where a gas station attendant looks like a freak and can't hardly speak. Yeah, that poor dude. He had a very terrible stutter. It was like... Uh, <laughs> that would be so frustrating. Yeah. To want to say something but not be able to say it. Yeah. Especially to want to say something as badly as he needed to say something. Yeah, it's frustrating to listen to. She acts like a total bitch, though. She was. I honestly didn't care that she got killed. I was like, good. The only thing I felt bad for was the gas station attendants of getting arrested for her murder. Yeah, and they never say what happened to him. Like he didn't get a, he didn't get released or anything. I assume he does get released after everything that happens. But, yeah, oh, you would hope. But she pulls in there. It's pouring rain, and she's just laying on her horn. Like, yeah, pump my gas. Like, is this the fifties? Because like I've never had anyone pump my gas. They still do it in Jersey. Uh, they have full service stations there. Huh. That's why I, I I made the joke about what did she think this is Jersey? Okay. The entire uh, theater busted up laughing. <laughs> um, but I don't. You don't see it much in other places. Maybe some rural towns and stuff like that. Now they are. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to take place in Maine. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there's a Maine license plate later, and they mentioned something about Maine, but. Oh, uh, who was the other guy that was in this? Oh, no. no. I was Sorry, I was thinking of somebody else. Uh, the guy that went to go skiing, but that's Dawson Creek's own. Okay. Sorry, I just got, I distracted myself. <laughs> but anyway, so she lays on the horn, and she's like, come pump my fucking gas. And the guy actually does come out. Yeah, in the pouring rain. And he's like, sure, I'll do it. And he just happens to glance into her back seat and sees that there's somebody back there. Yeah, how'd they get in? Must have been in there when she got in the car. Maybe but she didn't lock her door. How long have has the killer been sitting in the car? Well, I mean, considering our knowledge, they've probably been in the car since she left school. Oh, so, did she go? Did she leave from school? I don't know if she was leaving from I school or going, going back, back to school, but I would assume they got in her car in you're, school. You're right. She was. She was. She was leaving school. I believe. I think you're right. Um. Obviously, by, by the way, everyone, spoilers for this movie. And this is a whodunit. Mm-hmm. This is a murder mystery movie. So if you haven't seen Urban Legend, go see it because it, this is it's a good movie. It's very good. You should see it. But anyway, so he's trying to warn her. 
And he does a really smart thing. Yeah, he's so smart. Yeah, he he says that the credit card company wants to speak to her. Like, there's a problem with her credit card, Mm -hmm. so she has to come in. So he can get her a loan to tell her. Yeah. But she freaks the fuck out because Mm -hmm. she picks up the phone and there's a, you know, busy signal. And he's trying to tell her. No, and she's like, she's like, get away from me, and she pushes him and everything, and runs out, and he's trying to like scream at her, but he can't. Yeah, he can't get the get words out. out. So then, as the big, you know, kind of like teaser thing, he's as, as she's pulled away, he screams, "There's that one in the back seat," <laughs> and then she gets murdered. Yeah, she but, deserved it one hundred percent. I agree. I mean, like when we find out what she did in the past. Yeah. All the stuff, yeah, she There's no it. redeeming qualities about this character. No, no. So. None at all. But the, the killer is bold as brass, I'll tell you that much, because they take a axe and swipe it at them, like fucking hit them, decapitate them, while... The, while she's driving. That's true. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that they didn't get hurt. How did they survive that? Yeah, they don't choose to, to show us that, so. No, because it's ridiculous. Yeah. But, yeah, we just see the the glass break, and then it's like, Herbert Legend! <laughs> Plain text. It's just like white text. It's not a good title card. No. So... Everybody is upset because somebody, you know, on campus has been killed. Well, not everyone's upset. Jared Leto wants to um, exploit it for his job well, in the newspaper. Yeah. And they're making fun of it, too. Did um did you think that it might be him because he wanted the drama to write about? Because I thought that. I thought it might be him, yeah. I thought, you know, you look at Jared Leto and, and you think scumbag. So. Yeah, true. <laughs> he does have that vibe. He does have the creepy vibe. So I, you know, I, I did suspect him for a while. I thought, I knew it wasn't Tara Reed because Tara Reed was on the radio when, and actually like, you know, broadcasting when the murder took place. Right. And I didn't think they were messing with us with that. Um, and then I knew it wasn't the lead girl. Right. Oh, from uh, Sybil? Yeah. Jesus, Sybil? And Mr. Holland's opus. Yeah. The, the, the pretty redhead. Yeah. Uh, I knew it was. I knew it wouldn't be her because that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, there were. I, I figured it could have been. I figured it could have been the professor. It could have been Jared Leto. It could have been the one dude that was Tara Reed's boyfriend. Yeah, I didn't really think it was him. I didn't think it was Joshua Jackson, and that gets no. that gets the kibosh pretty quick anyway because he's the second victim, right? Which was sad. I wish he would have been in the movie more. Yeah, he was actually decent in the movie. They so they have an urban legend class taught by Frederick Krueger, and uh, he's like, "Hey, what do you guys think about urban legends? You know, if you dream uh, and you die in your dream, you die in real life." <laughs> so something like that. No, they don't. They they make some uh, what do they call it meta jokes, mm-hmm. but that's not one of them. It should have been. At one point, they say something like, oh, that girl's the girl from the Noxzema commercial or whatever. And it's, that's who she yeah. is. It's uh, Rebecca Gayart or whatever her name is. Noxzema girl. And then at one point, uh, Pacey turns on the, I'm just going to call him Pacey, turns on the <laughs> radio and out blasts on the radio, I don't want to wait. That was hilarious. That was a laugh out loud moment in the theater for yeah. sure. <laughs> Everyone was was laughing. So he's trying to come on to our main character. Yeah, he's so this girl dies, and everyone's like, "Hey, did anybody know her?" Blah blah blah, and everyone's like, "No, nah, I didn't know her." And, and Redhead's like looking at the ground. She's like, "I didn't know her," which is a lie. Yeah, because later we find out there's a yearbook of them doing. Uh, Gymnastics, not gymnastics, uh, cheerleading together and everything. Yeah, it looks like they were best fucking friends. And uh, Pacey finds out about that. And he's like, I got to tell Dawson. No, he, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he says, hey, this is a lot or whatever. Why don't, instead of going to this party, because there's a big, big like uh, fraternity party or something like that. 
He's like, instead of doing that, let's go, like, just drive around and, you know, like, clear your head and stuff like that and everything. Yeah, he's being really nice. Yeah. Until he starts coming onto her. But so they're in there, like, at fucking Lover's Lane or whatever, Lookout Points. Uh, anal, in the woods. Anal Junction or whatever right. the fuck it's called. And um, he's like, you know, you just got to, what does he say? What's his pickup line? God, I, I don't remember. He says something like, I know how to, you know, get you relaxed. Yes. Yeah, Take your mind like off that. of stuff. It's like, it's really bad. And it's so funny, too, because I know you think Joshua Jackson's cute or whatever. Um, Not with his hair. No, nah, he's got, he has the full, full platinum blonde hair. blonde hair. It's awful. Um, But, like, you know, he's got that easy grin. He, like, he's charming. He's, sure. It's a charming face. Sure. Um, so, like, I can see what he's trying to do, trying to be a charmer. And she kind of puts him in his place. Mm -hmm. Doesn't she hit him? Uh, no, she threatens to. Okay. She says, hey, you know, uh, try that again or whatever, and, you know, I'll punch you in the eye or something like that. Yeah. I'll give you a black eye. Or maybe she, maybe she does hit him and says, I'll give you another black eye. Yeah, she said one black eye or two. Because he kept going. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, she hit him. She's she's tough. And then there was a there's a, like a a twig snap or something like that outside. There's some noise outside, and he's like, "I'm gonna check it out. I'll be right back." I think he said he had to go take a piss. Yeah. Uh then the next thing she hears is his is the sound of like like <laughs> on the roof as someone's trying to attack her. Yeah. Yeah, because it's apparently, I've never heard this urban legend before, but apparently the scratching on the roof of the car was his feet because he's hanging in the tree above the car. I feel like, like they made up some of these urban legends for the movie. What about the man with the hook? I guess they couldn't use it because of I Know What You Did Last Summer because yeah. he had a hook. Yeah. But I mean, that was an urban legend before that movie. That's yeah, true. You're right. Um, that was in Spooky Stories to Tell in the Dark. <laughs> or Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, that's what it's called. I don't know. Scary. I think it's Scary Stories. Um, Speaking of, like, yeah. I was trying to find our copy of that today yeah. because I wanted to look at it yeah. with my niece. Yeah. And I uh, couldn't find it. I don't know where it is. Sad. Yeah. It is the season, so. Yeah, it is spooky season. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll find it. Okay. Don't worry about it. But anyway, so... Uh, yeah, I've never heard of this, that story either, but I guess they made it up for this movie. Prior to, uh, this though, Joshua Jackson is in the, uh, class. Yeah. And the professor wants to demonstrate an urban legend with, uh, pop rocks and soda. Yeah. Everyone's heard that one, right? The pop rocks and soda make you explode. Yeah. And, and our main character was too afraid to try. No, it was. Uh, it wasn't. There? It was Gabrielle Cartier. No, not Gabrielle Cartier. She's from now to now. Rebecca Gayhart. It was Noxima girl. Oh, Noxima girl. Okay, well, she was too afraid to try it, so he offered to do it. And He's then like, he I'll do it. I'll, I'll down it. And then he acted like he was dying, which was you know whatever. Because and they they point out the the whole like uh, you know Mikey ate it or whatever, mm-hmm. and he died. I I heard that too. Yeah. When I was like in elementary school and shit, I heard that shit. And then the professor showed a picture of him as an adult and like, hey, he's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I still, well, I'm sure it doesn't kill you. I still think it would have to give you an upset stomach. I mean, there is a reaction that occurs with the pop rocks and the soda. It does get all foamy and fizzy. Yeah. That can't be good for your stomach. I think I've done it before. Well, you're a brave soul. <laughs> it's probably not comfortable, but it's really just releasing carbon dioxide gas. Okay. So make you burp? Yes, probably yes. That what he spit out of his mouth when he was pretending to be dying though, that was some nasty shit. It was some foam, man. And it was green. Why yeah. was it green? Green pop rocks. Ugh. It was gross. Oh, but yeah, he's the class cut up everybody. And now he's being hanged. Yeah, he dies. Yeah. She tries to drive away, or she does drive away. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they had him attached with a rope to the car so that she was actually killing him while she was escaping. Uh, that was kind of cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool that Joshua Jackson died. It's cool that Pacey's dead. He won't be in uh, Dawson's Creek anymore. Right, right. Not, you can't be attracted to him anymore because he's a corpse. 
Okay. Because that'd be necrophilia. That would Gross. make you a freak. What is wrong with you? Are you a, What's wrong with you? You're attracted to a corpse. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, um, so two murders, and this is one thing I didn't love. Okay. The administration, the, the dean or the president of the school or whatever, mm-hmm. Mr. Sirius, is trying to cover it up, essentially. Like, they're ignoring the fact that these are murders. Oh, uh, that one guy's just on a ski trip, because he was supposed to go to a ski trip. Mm-hmm. That one guy's just on a ski trip, I bet. And uh, the other woman, that's, you know, uh, the, they got the guy. It was the gas station attendant that killed her. And, like, with every murder, it becomes more and more unbelievable of him just, like, turning a blind eye. Why? Yeah. It is kind of weird. He's not in on it. I guess he didn't want, like, the school to have a bad reputation, or he didn't want to have to close down or whatever. But. It seems really weird. Like, it seems, uh, it seems, like, what's, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it was, uh, falsely pointing us in his direction, maybe? No, 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 no. Um, irresponsible. Sure. It seems, like, irresponsible and dangerous yeah. to, to do that. It's not like in Jaws. Where the Jaws mayor's like, uh, you know, oh, you say Barracuda, everyone's like, huh, what? <laughs> you say shark. You know, during Memorial Day weekend or whatever, Fourth of July weekend, we've got, you know, a panic on our hands. That Amity Island in that movie was a tourist attraction. Fourth of July was like their biggest fucking holiday. So it's millions of dollars. Right. Now, he's being irresponsible, too, but... At least there's that motivation of all the money mm-hmm. that's coming into the town. Like, what's his motivation? I don't. I don't know. And then the next one they're trying to poo poo off is uh, the roommate. So she's if, the next one that dies. Yeah. Right? Well, so red red goes and gets a um, a book of urban legends <laughs> because she's like very early on. They're like, hey, someone's killing someone with urban legends, right? Because of the person in the back seat, and then. Uh, the fucking guy being ha- hanged on the top of the car. That's an urban legend, too. We decided. And I don't think that what happens to her roommate's an urban legend, or if it is, I certainly never heard of this That's one. another one I've never heard of. And it's in the book she's reading. They don't point it out. Like, I actually kind of like that it's very subtle, because you just see uh, the wall that says, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the lights, in the book. Mm-hmm. And it's the same message scrawled on the wall in her dorm room. In blood. Yeah, but and but I've never I've never heard of that one either. I think that's just another one they made up. But it's enough of a connection to where yeah. you're like, okay, sure, urban legend, whatever. Um, but earlier in the movie, she, her roommate's like having sex, and she's like, "Get the fuck out!" You know, whatever. Like, turn off the light. Yeah, because she turns the light on, and yeah, she doesn't tell her to get the fuck out. She just tells her to turn off the light, and she doesn't. She just stays. She just puts on her headphones and goes to bed while her roommate's fucking in the bed next door. Yeah, it's so really weird. weird. Really weird. Doggy style, too. Violently. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so uh, the when she comes in again, now the killer is there holding her down. And, like, she's trying to scream and stuff, but it's all like, uh, uh, is what sounds like it could be sex, I guess. Yeah, he's choking her out. And so she goes to turn the light on. And she's like, oh, sorry, not looking. And she's like... Right. Covers her eyes and goes and lays down. Doesn't Puts on her the, headphones. Doesn't turn the light on. And then the girl gets killed. And then, you know, she wakes up in the morning to a dead roommate now, full of blood with that scrawled on the wall. I have I have an issue with this, too, that they're like, oh, it's suicide. Both of her wrists were cut. Yeah. And who, who commits suicide writes in giant letters on the wall... Aren't you glad you didn't... It's such a long note. Right. Aren't you glad you didn't uh, fucking whatever? And then uh, and then goes back, walks back to bed. And why weren't there um, strangle, strangle marks on her neck? That's how they killed her. Exactly. I mean, maybe they also bled her out, but I don't even think so. I, I remember, think she was already dead. Remember fucking Stan Uris in, in It? All, he could only manage two letters when he slapped his <laughs> wrists. <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot more blood than that should have been. I would have looked at that and been like, uh, it, IT, what do you, Italians did this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, so they're just all like, oh no, just suicide, no murder. Yeah, it makes no sense. It's so dumb. 
And she's like, but somebody was in the room. And they're like, well, yeah, but isn't there always somebody in the room? I mean, she's a little slut. <laughs> that's the part. <laughs> that's that's verbatim what he said. <laughs> there was someone always in the room. Um, that, but uh, that's the point at which when they turn a blind eye to, to that murder, that's like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, it seems like you're part of this. It doesn't make any sense. That's the one thing that I think, like, threw me off a little bit. Because I thought, like, is the Dean in on this? And it's weird that she was best friends with the first victim. Right. She was with the second victim when they got killed. She literally saw his body, but nobody believes her. And she's with the third victim when they get killed. And nobody is coming up to her saying, hey... What's up? You yeah. killing people? Like, yeah, exactly. No one suspects her, and none of her friends are like, oh, we should be scared. Right. Like, what the fuck? Everyone around you is dying, but it's all good. I guess it just happens so quickly. I don't know. But anyway, so Jared Leteau is out there the entire time, like, nosing his, his face in mm-hmm. anytime there's a murder. Of course. Trying to... Uh, Trying to get a story, uh, he he also he gets taken off the paper by the dean. Yeah, why why was that again? Because he's trying to make a st- story of all these murders, and they don't want him to. Yeah. So I mean, the other three murders are like I don't even understand why they occur. I mean, well, that's yeah. Okay, so good point. They the murderer. Is fucking with Red, mm-hmm. right? The first murder, when we find out, we'll reveal it at the end. But the first murder makes a hundred percent perfect yeah. sense. The second murder, I suppose, uh, it makes sense in the the way that um, she's with him, yeah, and she's trying to like terrorize her. The third murder makes sense because that's her roommate, and again, I guess she's trying to terrorize her. The other murders, it's like, those are just people that know her. Yeah. Like, everyone that knows her needs to die? What the fuck? Well, okay. There was the one at the party. Yeah. Where she pour, where she pours Drano down his throat, which, is that an urban legend? No, I mean, putting, I guess, putting the cat in the microwave. Dog. Dog in the microwave was the urban legend. She but, explodes the dog. Yeah. But the way that, which, I, I don't even think that would happen. Um... No, I think when you put a puppy in the microwave and you turn it on, they do not explode. They just start like kind of making like really low like. Okay, like, stop, stop, stop. Sounds. No, get, stop, stop. They just close their eyes. No, no, no. I don't want it. I don't want to think about it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so the dude who gets killed that was Tara, Tara Reed's, Reed's boyfriend. boyfriend. So he's not even close to the main character. No, not at all. And yeah, she pours, she drowns, starts drowning him in the toilet. What the fuck does he do to deserve this? Nothing. And then she like sticks the end of the the unclogger thing. Yeah, yeah. What's it fucking called? A plunger. Yeah, down his throat and then pours Drano down there. Yeah. It was awful. It's an awful way to die. That was the most violent and awful and terrible way, and he did nothing. Yeah, exactly. And and could he not fight off his attacker? Yeah, you'd think. Later, we're going to find out. We'll just reveal it. <laughs> it's Noxima Girl. Yeah. It's 97-pound Noxima Girl. <laughs> well, I mean, her hair adds an extra 10 pounds. I guess that's true. <laughs> but, like, how? I don't, like, the little goth girl, I guess, was shorter and tiny, too. So I guess she could choke her out in the bed and, like, hold her and everything. But fucking, how did she restrain that dude? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. The guy's like on the football team. Or Pacey. Like, you yeah. know. How did she string him up? Yeah, I don't know. That was weird. But anyway, so, uh, yeah. So that's that stretches the credulity. She also fucking axe murders... Uh, What's his name? What or not? Wes Craven. I keep wanting to call Wes Craven. Robert English. Yeah, the professor, mm-hmm. for really no reason, and to frame, uh, Red. Okay. For the murder, or yeah, or frame him for the murder. One of the two. I don't remember. And then also the dean. 
Yeah, she kills and, the dean. And she just runs him over with a car in the car parking lot. And oh, after she is, slit his... his uh, it's Achilles, Achilles tendon. And why did she kill the dean? Yeah, I don't know. And is that an urban legend? The hiding under the car and slitting your Achilles tendon? I, not that I've heard of. But, like... Yeah, why kill the dean? He's actively trying to help you by, like, poo-pooing this whole investigation. Yeah, that was very weird. And he's leaving. He's not even going to be in your way. Mm -hmm. Like, because he knew the redhead? Like, does everyone need to die? What the fuck? (laughs) Very big killing spray. And then... I think she just got carried away. Yeah. She just let some things get away from her. (laughs) Well, then she kills Tara Reid. Yeah. And, like, there was no urban legend there. She just hunts her down. Yes, in the in the radio thing. And, you know, chops her with the axe. Yeah. Yeah, no urban legend there. Sorry, Tara Reed, you just get to die. I mean, I guess it's, okay, so her motivation is because the first girl who was killed, who was our main character's best friend. Mm, yeah. And the main character were driving around with their lights off. Mm -hmm. And when somebody flashed their lights at them, they started chasing them because they thought it was funny, like in the car. So, yeah, they yeah, they did that urban legend where they they were driving with their lights off and yeah, the high beams and then you they chase them with high beams. Yeah. So so they scared them and the guy lost control of the car and died. Yeah. Like that was manslaughter, not intentional murder. Awful. Terribly irresponsible, but still. And all they get is probation, by the way. Which that would make me mad too. They they get I like I suppose they you, we see them talking to the cops, so like, you know they they make it known I guess of what they did or mm-hmm. whatever. Although the headline says something like like gang activity, like whatever some kind of gang activity, but they know that's not the case. Yeah, that's weird. It was like a prank. Uh so anyway. They only get probation, and they don't. They're not friends after that, because the one that gets killed first it was the one that's driving, and it, she was driving Red's car, mm-hmm. but she was driving, and Red didn't say like, "Hey, don't do it." So, why did she get so tortured? Like the other one got killed right away, and she was more at fault. Like it seems like you know. I agree. I mean, granted, Red actually makes it, but right. It, it seems like she was being meaner to her. Uh, Noxima girl also likes Jordan Catalana. Yeah. Yeah, they're fighting over him. I guess, uh, but I guess he's got a type, redheads. <laughs> right? So. <laughs> so, yeah, so we find out it's Noxima girl. And, like, her whole motivation is that she was the girlfriend of this guy. Yeah, that was the guy that died. That was her boyfriend or fiance. I think they had just gotten, yeah. yeah they just got engaged. Fiance. They could they couldn't uh, they couldn't get married yet because they couldn't afford it. They were saving up or whatever. yeah. So she you know they ruined her whole life and stuff, which sucks. But like she, then she goes all wild, crazy eyed and stuff. It's like does somebody really switch from like completely normal to that fucking Looney Tunes? Was she ever completely normal though? I mean, look at that hair. <laughs> But yeah, she goes full like fucking super villain, right? And uh, Lato sh- shows up, and she's like, "Hey, um, he- he's like, hey, you did good. I-, <laughs> I love this. I can use this for my newspaper, and we can be together." Like, fuck, Brad. Who gives a shit about her? And she's like, "Oh my god, really?" And he's like, "Yeah, just give me the gun." Like, <laughs> not not the right way to handle that. Yeah. So it was like, working. She's like, you're cute, but you're not that cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, they kill her. They do kill her, yes. they. So what ends up happening is they shoot her. They, they, they wrestle the gun away from her. They shoot her, and she falls out the window. Then it fades to black. The two of them are driving, Red and, and Jared Leto, for whatever reason, in the car, in the rain. And they're talking about, like, yeah, you know, we got her or whatever. Like, it's going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. Cops will be here soon. And then she jumps out of the back seat. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah! And I said, like, we looked at each other, and we gave each other that look of, like... The fuck? They fucked up. Like, yeah. they went way too far. And then they, like, crash the car or whatever. She flies out the window into the water. And then... This is what makes it okay. They flash, and it's another group of kids. It's like C-list, the cast we just had. (laughs) 
and they're like, yeah, that happened at, a, at this co- this very college, and you know whatever. So her story has become an urban legend, mm-hmm. and that part that we just saw didn't actually happen. That was the ending as told by this guy, right? Exaggerating everything, which is why it was so ridiculous. But then we see he's telling the story to Noxima girl. Yeah, Noxima girl's one of the friends, which is so stupid. Mm-hmm. And that's. That's purely for sequel stuff. Yeah. And it's like, to me, this movie would have been almost perfect without that, without her Mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. If they just ended the movie, I would have been fine. I even liked the, I even liked the over the top fucking like thing. And then the reveal that it's the urban legend version of the story that we just saw. I even liked that. I was like, oh, cool twist. Like you had me pissed for a second. And then you were like, ah, see how we exaggerate stories and stuff? And I was like, ah, very good points. You Mm -hmm. know, uh, but then they bring her in and it's like, "Mm, I don't like it. Yeah, but I mean, overall, though, I thought it was super enjoyable. I really liked it. It was a really fun time. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see any other horror movies uh, this spooky season. I don't know what else is, is coming out around Halloween time. They don't seem to... Like, this is the closest to Halloween they've released a horror movie in a long time for some reason. Yeah. Like, a lot of times they'll release them in in the summer or they'll release them in December. And it's like, give me one around October. I know October is not a huge time for movies. Summer and, you know, around Christmas are bigger times. That's why. But, like, give me a spooky season release. Um, But anyway, this is, it'd be hard to beat this is what I was going to say. Like I said, I don't know if we're going to watch another scary movie or not um, during the spooky season, but it'd be hard to top this one. Very good. Very good. So definitely go go see it, even though we just spoiled it for you. Yeah, go see it. If you haven't seen it, go see it before uh, Halloween. Yes. But that is the episode, Kira. Why don't you tell the people all the things they need to know? So you can write us at latefee1994 awol.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Correct. And share the tapes with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.